Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we'll be taking a look at a keyboard from Ula. This is the F2088. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so on today's video, we'll be taking a look at a keyboard from Ula. This is the F2088, and this was kindly sent to us for review by Ugly Bob. It's not actually for us. This is actually uh, earmarked for one of his family members, so uh, this will be being sent on very, very quickly after this review. So if you've got any comments or questions, please feel free to get them in quickly. Um, I will try and answer the questions as best I can, but otherwise, you're better off speaking to Ugly Bob on our Discord. With that out of the way, let's take a look at the keyboard and see what we actually get for our money. Now, talking of money, this is a little bit of an odd one. The price on this one does vary dramatically where you get it from. Now, I have found an Amazon link, Amazon.co.uk, for around about £50, which uh, seemed a little bit on the pricey side, but you can pick this up from places like AliExpress, etc., etc., for anywhere around about £20 upwards. So, for a fully mechanical keyboard with either brown, blue, black, or red switches, this actually isn't a bad deal at all. Now, it isn't got fully perky RGB lighting, which is a little bit of a downside, but certainly does look nice and has got a, a certain illumination to it. Another slight downside that some of you may find is if you're uh, used to using a UK keyboard, this only comes, as far as I can tell at the moment, actually in the US layout. So for all of you guys in the US, absolutely great. For those of you in the UK, uh, yeah, get ready for a weird enter key. So what do we actually get in the box to start with? So we actually get a pretty decent selection of peripherals here. So we get the keycap puller, which is always nice to see, although personally myself, I'm quite happy just to uh, pull the keycaps off, which is easily done. Not always quite as easy to replace. You also get a uh, instruction guide, which is predominantly in Chinese, so uh, yeah, ignore that. There is though, which is really nice to see, a magnetic wrist rest also included. There is rubber pads on the bottom of it, which is uh, always a good thing to see. And it's actually got a reasonable weight to it. This attaches to the front of the keyboard very, very easily, just a matter of lining up and the magnets snap it into place. And actually with it in place, it does give you a really nice rake to the keyboard. That's a technical term, obviously. So talking of the rake itself, so if you are one of those typists who like to have a quite flat deck, no problem at all. There are some feet on the back. So all you need to do is flip those down and the keyboard is pretty much entirely flat. Then also with the wrist rest on, you've got a really, really flat surface to type on. But if you're uh, maybe preferring a slightly more upright rake to your keyboard, then just flip out the legs, which uh, don't actually have any rubbers on them, sadly. There are rubbers at the front and also at the rear for the flat mode, but yeah, it would have been nice to have seen that on there. The back of the keyboard actually, which is a very really weird thing. I thought this was metal to begin with, but it's actually just a really, really strong plastic with a metal backing behind it. So uh, very minimal flex. There is a little bit of a creak there, although mostly that is my uh, palm hitting this control knob on the end there. So actually in terms of construction and build quality and all that kind of stuff, for only 20 quid, I think they've done a fantastic job here. The top deck is actually kind of like a, a metal effect finish in silver. The rest of it actually looks really good. I actually really like the font on the keys. So if you can see the keys pretty well, there's a really, really large font on the keys, which I personally appreciate, especially getting into uh, slightly later years. Eyesight's failing a little bit, so larger font on the key, always a winner for me. So let's take a look at some of the uh, additional buttons we've got on here. So there isn't a massive amount of extra buttons, but certainly ones which are of use. So you have got the function button on the keyboard, which you can use in conjunction with the Windows key to do Windows lockout, that kind of stuff. But the main ones are these top corner ones. So we've got three buttons here, which are for multimedia control or for macro setup. Uh, there's M1, M2, M3, and that is basically rewind, play, pause, and also fast forward. The really interesting part is this actually, this button on the top here. So it's a really nice clicky button, and it also twists as well. So you can use that for a variety of things. So in the RGB mode, you can use it to decrease or increase the brightness and pressing the button actually cycles through one of the 22 modes included in the RGB setup. But if you press and hold it for a couple of seconds, it then transfers into audio mode, in which case then a single press will mute or resume any audio and twisting the knob will actually adjust your volume up and down, which I think is actually a really good way of integrating two particularly good features into one control knob. 
So let's take a look at the actual key switches themselves. So if we take off one of these caps, you can see we've got a nice brown switch on there. They don't appear to be of any particular brand, although they do feel very similar to Otomu switches, if you've used those before, and that they're generally a pretty decent switch. They are Cherry MX clones, but they do the job very well. So again, you've got four options there. So you've got the brown, you've got the red, you've got the black, and also you've got the blue. So depending on your typing style, and your preferences, then you can choose one to suit your particular needs. There are some slight differences in pricing between the models, which again, there'll be some links in the video description, so you can check those out for yourself. But obviously, depending on what switch you like, personally myself, I'm more of a red switch person, but certainly for a lot of people, brown really does fit the bill. If you're a little bit more heavy handed, then possibly the black switches, but again, down to the individual. So let's get this plugged in and see what the RGB is like. So there we go, there is the keyboard illuminated with the RGB, and first of all we're greeted with uh, kind of like a wave pattern, so all we need to do is press the button here, oh, we're in audio mode, so let's press and hold that briefly, and then we can change the mode. So pressing the button goes through the different cycles of options for different RGB, again, it is fixed RGB per key, so it depends what you press, and where it is, all the keys are basically the same, so those pink keys down the bottom, will always be pink keys down the bottom, you get the general idea. So there's a couple of options for strip lighting effects, all that kind of stuff. Wave effects, that kind of thing. It's actually quite a nice, quite a nice looking RGB. It's not overly bright, not overly dazzling. We've got the studio lights in here, obviously, so you can uh, get an idea of how bright it actually is. And you can adjust the brightness, so if you don't like it, you can turn it right away off or down. And there are increments where you can turn it back up. Again, you can't really see the increments particularly well in this lighting, but certainly in a darker environment, it will show up really, really nicely. More of the RGB effects, so again, it's very much kind of the same kind of thing over and over again. Obviously the keys, like I said, are not per key lighting, so they will always do the same thing. Again, pinks will always be pink, blues will always be blue, etc., etc. But I think overall for the money, Run about £20. The Amazon price at £50, I think, is lunacy. I wouldn't pay that in a million years. But certainly for run about £20, £25 on AliExpress and some other sites which you can search for. I don't think this is a bad option for a fully mechanical keyboard. Again, for those of us in the United Kingdom, the enter key and obviously the to and the at sign being mixed around could be a potential downfall. But obviously, if you want to, you can just change it in your window settings, which is really easy to do. So I think, again, for £20, mechanical keyboard. Plenty of life in the switches, it rated around about 50 million presses, which, yeah, as always, we won't be testing that for sure. But yeah, pretty happy. Good construction quality, good price, really good font on the keyboard, and some quite nice RGB lighting. So let me know what you think about this one in the comments section below. In the meantime, I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.